Hello everybody and welcome to this video on Doki Tori 2 Plus with yours really slow wolf. So what is this thing? Well, it's a bit of an older game now at this point, but it's a 2D platforming puzzle game. Of which there are very many, but this one in particular is fairly adorable. And I love it, it's so cute. Uh, and it's also very simple and I really do enjoy some of the aspects that it tries to promote in terms of gaming philosophy. So we're going to go ahead and just literally dive right into this. The game, as you can see, is obviously very 2D and it's stylized to be very adorable and cartoony. There is nothing realistic about this or anything particularly artsy-fartsy about it either. It's just a game. And it's really, really well done for what it wants to be. Go ahead, come on, dudes. Oh, jeez. Um, so far so good, except for he's got that one link. That is very frustrating. Now what happens if I stop? Come on, one more time. One more time. Go up. Go up. Okay, that's not good. I killed off a bunch of them when I really shouldn't have. Oops. Anyway. So, one of the things that I really like about this game is its simplicity. As you guys can tell from the controls, there's only four buttons you use. A, B, and then the control sticks. That's it. That's all. Or alternatively, ZX, then the WASD slash control WASD sort of stuff. So, it's really, really, really simple. The As a result, the game itself is easy to play. There's a lot of options <laughs> not really and see that's also a, an indicator that the game itself is very simple and easy to pick up uh in terms of the controls however what makes this game interesting is the complexity that you find within the simplicity and uh in this case we've got is that the right one no it's not uh which one's the reset song god damn it so as you can see there's different ways to sing uh, based off of how long you hold the button, and that can, <laughs> can mean completely different stuff, or nothing at all. Uh, so resetting the level there, one way to do things. And that's one way to show off what I mean by complexity in depth. Um, if there's simplicity in what the abilities are, like I've got the ability to sing and stomp, and that's it. That's all. But beautifully put together, this game does a lot with just those two buttons alone. In this particular case, for instance, there's these bats, and if I sing next to these bats or stomp too loudly, they'll attack me and kill me horribly. I can also use, however, the stomp or the sing to anger them from here, and they will straight for me into the electricity and die miserably. Which allows me to then sing and bring that crap over. I just did three completely different things using two buttons. It gets even better when you've got like a million different things in the same space and you have to go ahead and use those two buttons to do everything. So for instance, boom, there's the bug here. Boom, gonna, oh, no, that's not the right place. He went up instead of to the left. Boom, to the left you go. Then we're gonna uh, get you back upstairs, voila. While you're upstairs, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy my time and get past that guy, voila, no problem. Now, if I sing near him, I don't think it does very much. I don't remember what it does. All right, so we just hit a checkpoint. Cool. Now here, slightly different. If I go too close to this thing here, the uh, the pillar goes up, and then the electrical bridge between those two is reinstated. So I would die horribly. What I need to do is kill them. The easiest way to do that, use the bats. Last time, the bats almost killed me. Instead, this time I hide from the bats, and the bats kill the one thing I need them to, I just wait out for the bats to go ahead and do the thing, and they go back to sleep. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no problem. And then we keep going, we hit another checkpoint. And it's very, very simple in terms of what the abilities do, but you can do so many different things with them, which I love. The other really cool thing is that they don't give you a tutorial for all this. You can just pick it up. Like, you play it. And then that's, that's it, that's it. It's, it's like Mega Man X, the first level of Mega Man X on the first game. They don't give you tutorials. Like, all you need to do is watch Eagle Raptor's uh, cartoon on how annoying that is to have a tutorial that goes, Mega Man, Mega Man, push the A button! And this game doesn't do that. It completely foregoes with it. And it's beautiful and awesome. In this case, for instance, you're stuck here and you're like, oh, what the hell do I do? Do I sing? No, what happens if I stop? 
the stomping works. Why? Because you notice you got a lot of little drips all over you. So you're like, oh, well, shit, I guess I stomped the water off of me. That's really cool. Hey, what happens if I do that? Nothing? Okay. So, stomping ain't gonna work. Oh, I opened the thing. It must have fallen. Hmm, I wonder if the crushy thing can do the trick. So we're gonna go ahead, sing, get the crap to push over the mask. And then, crushy thing. Done. I don't even have to worry about it anymore. I'm gonna use the same stomp the guy away because he's apparently very scared of me or very attracted by me based on whether I sing or I stomp near him. So yeah, stomping and singing. Really cool mechanics. Let's go ahead and let this guy through. Come on, little buggy. So there's a very large and deep puzzle mechanic in this game, despite there being very few uh, things you can do. And there's no tutorial, there's no push the A button to do this, it's just... Dems the brakes, kid. You gotta figure out from your, for yourself from here on out. Lends itself to being a very interesting and compelling experience because instead of you know kind of going, oh well, the game told me to do this, so I might as well do it. Um, you figure it out for yourself, and that gives me at least a really deep feeling of satisfaction that I don't get with many other games. Now, for the quick downsides, um, the difficulty curve for this game can be a little bit complex. Uh, at first, it starts off very easy, like very, very easy. And at this stage, like right now, we get to this puzzle here. And given the two tools I have had, I have not been able to get past this place. Like, not even once. I've been very confused by it. Like, I have to get that glowy doughy guy over there, over here, but I can't. There's no physical way to do it, as far as I can tell. So as a result, I've been kind of like, well, what the hecky heck do I do? Uh, and it just came out of nowhere, really. The rest of the game has been fairly easy to figure out, uh, given enough tries, and then this part comes up. Um, on top of that, I don't, it, it seems like as far as a story goes, there isn't much of one. Um, you start off, and you just have to get to your people, and there's a bunch of black shit that comes out of the ground. And then eventually, you decide to stay back and try to save the place while your people uh, all go off and uh, save themselves. So that's the point that I'm at right now. I don't think there's any major spoilers past that because the story is fairly lacking. But it's a puzzle platformer. If you're picking this up for the story, you're probably doing it wrong or you've played too much Braid. Um, and I think that's about it. The graphics themselves are very simple, but it lends itself well to the game. And it's a really easy game to pick up. There's nothing... Like, I, I've got all A's for this thing, really. It's great. I also want to give extra kudos to Sonic Picnic for the sound design because... Honestly, I think it's very well done. The music itself lends itself to the game as well, and it's just, it's its beautifully done. I especially like how there's like little little touches. Like when you're in the sunlight, your character's all like, yeah, I'm a chicken. And then when you're out of the sunlight and you're in the dark, your characters freak the heck out. It, it's nice. He even twitches and shivers every once in a while, which is really kind of cute. And the animals do the same thing too. See that eggplant guy? He's all like, eh. These guys over here, they're just, you know, they're wide-eyed and curious and they're doing all their thing. And the game is full of little touches like that, which I adore. So, again, I can't really sing this game's praises enough. I think it's extremely underrated. It's just maybe a bit short and a bit simple, uh, which maybe didn't keep people's attention. But if you're looking for a good puzzle platformer uh, that doesn't dick around and that, more importantly, has the good philosophy of show, not tell, this is the game. Anyway, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I know I sure did. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later!